So today I will talk about uh, this new pa uh, package, blockade pa uh, the blockade package for Rebrick system. Um, so what does this package does is um, uh, mainly simulating the river system. Uh, and uh, a few uh, a few keywords here and worth mentioning. Um, so it is uh, it has efficient and extensible emulation of the system and is designed for also designed for the river uh, hardware, uh, which is going to soon available uh, in the summer uh, through Amazon. Um, and this is an open source effort from the QRS software team, uh, also written in Pure Julia. So the river system is uh, described by uh, this Hamiltonian, uh, where you have the uh, uh, yeah, sorry, I missed the six power of six here. So you have you have a, a interaction term that decay in, uh, by the distance between two atoms um, uh, in the power of six, and uh, you have a, a rapid frequency uh, here and a tuning term here. So um, in this slide, I will go through. Uh, uh, the sections uh, in this order. So uh, we probably already seen this uh, um, feature overview yesterday. Uh, so I will go uh, a little bit on uh, details. So uh, blockade uh, handles, uh, a surface blockade handles a few things. Uh, first is the unit handling. So uh, it has building support for automatic unit conversion for the uh, river device so that uh, you don't need to worry about so when you need to use it, it will always line to the same unit used on the real hardware. Um, and building waveforms, uh, which is a set of two to help you build uh, your uh, own wave waveforms and allow you to do waveform transformations, such as uh, smoothing the waveform. Uh, and also, we, have, we provide a flexible building lattice. Um, to support various slices with uh, uh, somewhat fancy visualization. Um, and all these also build around the uh, uh, expression uh, or symbolic expression, um, which is the uh, river Hamiltonian. Uh, and in fact, the <coughs> in fact, the, uh, this uh, Hamiltonian expression has nothing special. It's just the, the your blocks we talked yesterday. Um, so in principle, you can also uh, simulate other Hamiltonian by creating other type of expression. Um, but this package is uh, uh, highly focused on the river system. Um, and uh, on the back end, we have uh, three kind of uh, back ends. So uh, on the, for the methods, uh, we, we currently have OD solvers and critical solvers. Um, in the future, we'll have also going to support uh, quantum Carlo. Um, so uh, both of them has skewed acceleration, and uh, um, this provides you uh, about 80 times speed up at most, comparing to our CPU implementation. And all these uh, functionality are integrated with YAL as well, so that you can make use of uh, the um, functionality from YAL, for example, um, checking the entanglement uh, or uh, checking the fidelity of your uh, register. Um, so the first component uh, uh, I would like to introduce is the building lattices. Um, the building lattices implements uh, the generic Ravis lattice, uh, so it provides uh, a lot, lot of convenient constructors for these common lattices. Uh, and also uh, we have these fancy plots generated automatically for the lattices. Um, and the, uh, the second component is the waveform. Uh, so we have the uh, building waveforms, um, and they are also a generic waveform object, uh, which conceptually just a, a function of time plus a duration. Um, so the, uh, so there, these are, uh, we provide uh, lots of convenient constructors for common waveforms, and uh, also waveform transformations like slicing, smoothing. Um, so this makes uh, uh, it much easier to create uh, uh, waveforms that are uh, using experiments. Um, and component three is the OD and critical emulation. So uh, the critical solver is something we built from scratch. 
Um, this is uh, a very suitable type of uh, emu uh, emulation method for QoA-like simulation, which has a uh, piecewise constant pulse shape. Um, the OD server for, uh, is designed for continuous pulse simulation, and which is also powered by the famous dif uh, differential equation package. So uh, here is a, a blog post comparing uh, different kind of uh, differential equation solvers. You can see um, the differential equation package in Julia is almost all green here, um, which means it has uh, a lot more features than others. Um, so uh, so our, all our emulation are generic and fast. Uh, I will explain what is generic uh, a bit later, what generic means here a bit later. Um, so here, here uh, regarding the fast simulation, we have uh, here, which uh, there's a benchmark with uh, QT. Um, so from the, uh, so the first uh, picture is uh, the absolute time of uh, each benchmark. Um, and from the second picture, you can see the speed up of uh, Blackhead comparing to Qtip. So um, at 20 side system, you can see the uh, speed, speed up of the uh, blocky CUDA implementation is over a hundred times, uh, which, which already means uh, some uh, things that was not possible to simulate uh, is now possible to simulate within a reasonable time. Um, so, um, the feature two is so uh, because we uh, build on top of differential equation, uh, there are more choices of OD solvers, and we actually discussed different, uh, uh, like when uh, what kind of solvers and the, uh, what does these different solver means uh, in our documentation. Um, so here, a list of uh, some selected commonly used solvers um, like the Adam Moller methods, Adam. Uh, um, batch force explicit methods uh, or very small efficient on the quota. Uh, so th this will be the default server we'll be using today. Um, so they, uh, they have different trade-offs of efficiency, precision, and memory. Um, the feature three is uh, um, the river block is SAS-based simulation. So the river system uh, has a very special property that is the river blockade. Um, so here's the, a simple picture that demonstrates what exactly uh, that means. So um, in Rayburg, we have a ground state and excited state called the river state. And here's the energy uh, of uh, uh, plots of, of the uh, state between uh, of, of the two sides. So we can see within the block here radius, um, the Ground state plus uh, the the state prefers to be at uh, a different uh, um, at a different configuration. So one, one ground state uh, and one block state, um, and it and it's it's gonna be hard to be at both um, or reverse excitation. So this as a result, um, you always have only one uh, reverse state. Um, Within the blockade, so this can be used to do uh, can be used for to do an approximation, so that we can truncate the SAS space. Um, so by using this method, we're able to simulate uh, uh, fifty one sites, which is approximately two to the six um, two to the twenty six uh, for blockhead SAS space, and two to the twenty fifty one for full space. Um, and this was done for a real uh, experiment simulation. And as you can see, the uh, the dash line are uh, the dash line are the real experiment uh, results, and the um, the concrete lines are the simulation. So you can see the lines are actually aligned pretty well, uh, except uh, this one, uh, where the ODEs over. Uh, fails to, uh, fails to uh, keep this precision. Um, so, so feature four is a generic implementation. So that all the implementation in blockade are generic. 
which means um, if you plug in marimans.gl, uh, it will uh, automatically give you linear error propagation on the river dynamics. And if you plug in forward diff with plug it, it will give you forward mode automatic differentiation on river dynamics. So the, uh, this feature are enabled by uh, generic programming. Okay, now uh, I will go through uh, adiabatic uh, state preparation example. Uh, and so we can learn how to use this package. So, um, so the adiabatic state preparation basically is about uh, uh, preparing a Z2 uh, order state, which means uh, um, which means uh, the next uh, the sum of uh, this, uh, the spin up and downs are zero, um, and the, uh, and how we're gonna do implement this is by um, by running a uh, river Hamiltonian dynamics um, to from one pulse parameter to another pulse parameter adiabatically, uh, so that we prepare the state uh, at uh, ground another, uh, the, at the ground state of another Hamiltonian. Um, so to install the uh, so to to set up this package uh, to set uh, you only need to add install block kit, uh, but for this, this example we'll be using. Uh, a few other package as well. So Python, uh, we use we'll use Python call for the plotting. So so uh, we'll use Matplotlib for the plotting uh, because everyone knows Julia plotting uh, Julia plots uh, sucks at the moment. Um, so and the curve kits is uh, we'll use this to demonstrate uh, an ED example of the Hamiltonian. Um, and express arrays is just the, the uh, the, uh, the standard Julia library for sparse arrays. So first uh, we should initiate the project. So install the uh, array package for us. Okay, and then uh, import the packages. So if you if you in, uh, if you use the package for the first time, um, it will take a while to pre-compile. Uh, Black is actually uh, quite a large package, um, and the uh, and using also takes a while. Uh, okay, so here we first uh, what we're going to do is um, want to generate um, the uh, location or the coordinates of our atoms on a chain lattice uh, of nine sites. And it will scale the distance between each atoms by uh, 5.72. And you can see uh, every, every, every value, physical value, are actually, uh, actually has a unit. So, this, um, so once you generate this, actually, uh, automatically plots the lattice. So this is our nine atoms. Um, so if you, if you have the... Um, for example, if you want to try, there's other kind of lattices. So then there's there's square square lattice. We can generate uh, we can also generate sites for square lattice. For example. So, so here you got a square lattice. Um, also there's honeycomb lattice. Here's uh, the high comp lattice for Kagomi. So these are uh, some of the most commonly used lattices. Uh, but in general, uh, any breadth lattice, as long as you know the lattice vector, uh, you can generate it from it. Um, okay. Um, the other functionality is probably worth mentioning is probably the um, random drop. So sometimes uh, we want to simulate the random drop in the random dropouts uh, effect uh, uh, in the 
uh, experiments. So uh, this is useful when you want to create a random graph um, in your Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so this will randomly dro um, drop out some of the atoms from your lattice, uh, but will still plot the um, positions of lattice. Um, so, the, uh, so this will be useful uh, uh, if you want to try um, the other example, which calculates the maximum intensity problem uh, on river system. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, continue our uh, example. Um, so, this, so now we will we'll scan the uh, the ground states of uh, uh, this Hamiltonian by setting our detuning frequency from. Uh, negative two pi to uh, uh, ma plus 10 to positive two pi ma plus 10 um, at uh, 30 different locations. Um, so, so, uh, so here we, we're still not simulating the dynamics, it's just the brute force um, trying to see what the ground state looks like. Uh, so this, this is, uh, so, um, here we'll be uh, what we'll be using is uh, first uh, this function that uh, creates the river handle here. For example, this creates uh, this handle name. Um, so you can see the parameter at the first uh, uh, for for delta is uh, uh, for omega is uh, two pi multiplies two. So it automatically divide by two, uh, and uh, at the beginning is negative uh, uh, is negative two pi uh, negative ten um, for the detuning parameter, and uh, the uh, these are interactions defined by the uh, atoms. So so basically, what we want is the uh, ground. Want to see the matrix of this Hamiltonian? So this gives you gives us the matrix, um, and uh, um, you can use the curve lock kit to get the eigenvalues. This, this will give us the lowest eigenvalue and uh, vectors will give us the, um, the ground state state vector. Uh, so, so because we want to scan this like, uh, through the whole um, detuning parameter. So here what, what we're doing is uh, we'll be, um, so we'll be creating a, a re-register uh, as we mentioned yesterday, uh, which is the YAL re-register. Um, and then uh, we, can, uh, we can use this, we can calculate the river density on this register. So I'll demonstrate, uh, I'll demonstrate on one single set how this works. We can create a, a re-register from any uh, array type. Um, Density. So river density calculates the uh, density, the river density, like the uh, the density of uh, river states, river configuration of your state. So basically, the expectation of this in operator. Um, so, for example, want to see what's the river density of first site and second site. So they all uh, at the beginning they all look the same, um, and uh, but if we uh, if we use the uh, last detuning parameter, which is the target ground state, so we can see okay at the out 
position, it's almost uh, certain that it's going to be a river state. And at even position, it's almost certain it's not going to be a river state. Okay. So, um, so here we just run this uh, function so we can see what the structure of these ground states looks like. So this is the beginning. Um, they all look even. So, uh, which is the, which actually the zero states. Um, and then, uh, Uh, the first and last one. You, you mean the delta? Oh, the first and last side. There's no boundary conditions. Uh, so this is this is just start from a zero state. This one. Oh. Um, yeah, so so this 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 is the ground state of uh, uh, of the beginning uh, of the initial Hamiltonian, where where your detuning is uh, negative, um, and uh, um, omega is uh, is a constant. Uh, there's there's no like special constraints or anything else. It's just the ground state of this Hamiltonian, this specific Hamiltonian. Does this answer your question? Oh, you mean the lattice condition? Yeah, it's open boundary condition, yes. Yes. Uh, right, so, okay, so, so uh, okay, so th this is the structure of this, uh, the ground state of uh, this Hamiltonian. Uh, and we'll be preparing this state using adiabatic evolution. Um, so if you if you uh, if you want to uh, check, you can also check the other parameter of uh, uh, of this evolution. Um, so so the pause preparing this uh, uh, the adiabatic pause to prepare this uh, uh, state in one D is um, quite simple. So uh, omega. And uh, delta. Uh, we can plot two waveforms. So, uh, so if you want to plot the waveforms, uh, we also have a building function plots uh, that will give you the uh, waveform. So this is our omega, and this is our delta. So omega is uh, uh, this chip, and delta is from negative to positive. Um, and we generate uh, we generate atom positions. Um, this is the same as previous, and create the Hamiltonian. Um, so this time the um, uh, um, the, one, the only difference is omega is uh, it's also it's only it's also during, it's a, it has a bump up um, stage, but it's it stays constant during the evolution of your detuning. Um, okay, so uh, we just uh, then we just uh, say our initial state is zero state, and if we want to evolve uh, the zero state to the end of uh, our pause, um, which is total time equals to um, total time equals to three, um, and uh, this will create as an integrator. Um, but first, we can create a problem like this. So let's define the Schrodinger type problem, which will use the OD solver to solve this um, evolution. Um, and the printing will show you what kind of uh, register, uh, what kind of equation um, it is using, and what options it has. Um, so um, because this uh, because uh, this supports uh, also supports other type of uh, matrices or uh, devices. If you use GPU, this will be a uh, CUDA matrix. Um, and uh, this will show how large your uh, storage you're gonna use. 
Um, so this is useful when you simulate uh, uh, quite a large system. Um, and then we uh, create an integrator, uh, which uh, we'll be uh, using to uh, get the middle results of our evolution. Um, so here we, we use the time choice iterator. And so an iterator it, it basically just creates something that you can use a for loop to iterate. And this will return the, uh, this will stop at each time step that we specifies here, which is uh, 10 to the negative three. And then we can uh, it to all the densities we calculate. So if you plot them, uh, this should be perfectly uh, at the Z2 state from, uh, uh, from the zero state. So this is the dynamics of this evolution. Um, also, we uh, you can also check the history histogram of uh, our output state. So we can see uh, it actually um, the most pr um, probable state is the one one oh one oh one oh state. So okay, so this is the uh, the, ada, the simplest one D uh, adiabatic state preparation. Um, so so next we uh, I will I'll show how to use the blackest sas space to do the simulation, and actually to use blackest sas space, this is super simple. Uh, we just create the black space from your atom positions with a uh, black radius that uh, you like to specify. By default, this radius is, should, be the, uh, should be your lattice spacing. And this space basically shows a uh, mapping between the SAS space and the full space. And instead of putting a total number of uh, qubits or total number of sites into the zero state uh, constructor function, uh, we, we just put the space function, a uh, space uh, as the parameter to uh, our register function. And this automatically creates a different register type, uh, which is called the SAS space register. Um, and the rest are all the same. Um, so here, because we are now going to inspect uh, uh, the result in the middle, so I would just uh, run the emulate function. So uh, this gives us the, uh, the same result of the, our previous full state simulation uh, in a much smaller uh, Hilbert space. So for 2D, this, uh, this is uh, similar. Um, we can generate a square lattice uh, of a different scale, uh, which is like this. Uh, the poles are the poles are actually still similar. So these codes are all similar, but but on two D. So we can see the this this also prepares the uh, Z two state on two D. So this is the simplest uh, example that prepares the adiabatic uh, adiabatic that prepared the Z two state uh, using Blackhead. Uh, and uh, presumably in the summer with machines online, you should be able to directly run this uh, run run this code on a real rubric system based machine. Um, okay, so this is this is our first example. Is there any questions for the code? Okay, uh, if there's no not any question, uh, I will briefly go uh, go through the first part of the maximum set problem, and then we will have um, uh, a hands-on section. Uh, uh, that let you uh, play with uh, the notebooks we have yesterday and today, and also you can work on the tasks. Um,
So for the maximum data sets, um, I'll probably talk about the problem first. What's, what's, what exactly a maximum data set? Um, so the problem we want to study is, uh, um, so, um, so by definition, maximum data sets uh, basically says um, we have a graph and uh, uh, the set of um, near, uh, nearest, uh, uh, the set of vertices that is not connected is the independent set. And we want to find the maximum, uh, max, uh, this, this, this kind of side of the maximum size. And because uh, of the uh, river blockade effect we just mentioned, that within the blockade, um, it is always preferred to only have one river state. So uh, if we construct, um, if we construct uh, a near, um, and we, and we let oh, we see uh, within the blockade, every atom has a connection with each other. Uh, for example, uh, this graph. Yeah, this one will take a, a little longer. Um, I would use this example. We can generate Okay, so this creates a random, uh, a, few, uh, a few random atoms on square lattice. Um, and if we, uh, if we let uh, the atoms connect to each other, So this, this is gonna give us uh, a, some kind of graph and we call this kind of graph a unit disk graph because each is created by a unit disk of your atoms. Um, so, so now we see actually uh, because of the blockade, the ground state of uh, Rayburg, um, uh, uh, of river system naturally embeds uh, the solution of uh, maximum intense set problem. So the problem is how we uh, find uh, the ground states. So we can do it adiabatically, uh, uh, like our first example. Uh, I eventually find this um, uh, this kind of state. So it's it's, it's kind of similar to a Z two state, but a random graph. Um, uh, or if that the other way is some uh, fancier uh, way, uh, fancier method is called Q, uh, QOA, where we use um, a set, uh, a sequence of time evolution um, that, uh, that has, uh, that is parameterized. So,
So this is a random uh, just once linear pulse. Um, so one, one way, the simplest way to implement QA is we just use this uh, this pulse for, as our detuning parameter and the rabbit frequency, and we hope uh, and uh, and we hope we can uh, our we can use a classical optimizer to find the uh, the correct pulse sequ uh, sequence that pr uh, eventually produce. Uh, our expected uh, ground state. Um, okay. Sorry, it sounds some somehow keep breaking poly. Okay, so anyway, um, so, so here we can use a uh, package called generic testing networks to solve um, an independent sets of uh, a unit disk graph. Um, so so like in block A, we have a function called the unit disk. Um, this will create uh, a unit disk graph, uh, as I showed above, uh, by specifying uh, a black key radius that you would like to use. So here we use uh, um, the same size of lattice spacing, but you can also make it a little larger. Um, so this will create um, a bit more dense uh, graph, and th this graph all unit disk graph. And the unit disk radius is uh, equivalent to this. Um, okay. Uh, so, so the adiabatic approach is actually uh, exactly the same as we just did. So you can see the pulse chip is also the same. Um, and this will, uh, and and using a similar uh, code, this will give you. Um, the result, uh, our expected results, as long as the evolution time, the total time of evolution is large enough. Um, so uh, the other, so so I will leave um, the QA part for you to explore um, directly, and you can and you can see the um, you can see uh, you can see this visualization of our solution. Um, sample from the rubric. And actually, if you try the piecewise constant pulse, uh, you'll see it doesn't actually work well. Um, this is why uh, later we'll see we need to do a trick that to smoothen the, uh, smoothen the omega and the delta. Um, so here is our original uh, omega pulse. This is a smooth, smoothened omega pulse. Um, so using a smoothened pulse uh, is usually better. Um, so uh, so blockade also provides uh, various different methods of uh, uh, smoothing. Uh, this is all in this example that you could try yourself. Um, so I will leave uh, about uh, uh, 15 minutes, uh, uh, 40 minutes for, for, for you to play with uh, this notebook and uh, um, the task we uh, mentioned yesterday. Uh, let me open. So there, there are four uh, hands-on tasks you could also work on. Um, 